Dehancer is a comprehensive tool for film emulation, which lets you recreate all the main characteristics of analog film. Dehancer provided me with the plugin for free to review, but all my opinions are my own and I'm allowed to say anything I want. To start with, I'm personally more of a friend of the digital look and I like doing everything from scratch. I do not use LUTs or other plugins for the look of my video. But there are two aspects that I find quite useful in Dehancer, even for me as a digital creator. So what is Dehancer? Dehancer itself is a film emulation plugin, which is part of color grading. In the past, film development was based on chemical solutions with several bars. Filmmakers would alter this process slightly, for example with the bleach bypass process. Also they could choose different types of film to get images with different characteristics. Now let's have a look at the plugin itself. I will show you the process where we work without CSTs and directly use VLOG from our Lumix S5-2X. Under plugins you can find Dehancer Pro. Drag it onto a node and select your camera color signs as input. If you want to create your own LUT for your Lumix S5 II or S5 IIX, I recommend you follow my steps. As example footage, choose a clip with the white balance you plan to shoot on. My clip here has something like 4600 Kelvin. This is the Kelvin white balance I'm planning to shoot on. At the top we have some general settings. In conventional film, you would change the developer solution to make some initial adjustments to your film. We can do this easily with a slider here. For each selection here in Dehancer, you have to enable it so it is applied. This lets you easily add and remove an effect. Personally, I like the color boost and contrast boost function because it gives my footage an extra punch. Under film, we can select the actual role of the film that we want to use. Here we have the Kodak Vision 3 films, which were used in Hollywood in the last decades. You have the 50D and the 250D for daylight, and the 200T and the 500T for tungsten. I like to use here the 200T. If you want to know which movies used which type of film, check out shotonwhat.com. Film compression helps us to make the image look more analog by clipping the highlights later than a digital camera does. Expand helps us to map our digital exposure onto the analog one. The last stop of developing analog film is optical printing. We get a positive film for screen projection. I can choose a specific Kodak film and adjust the look a bit. At color light you can apply some toning which can be achieved with various methods like special processing modes, additional chemical treatments of the analog film and so on. By moving the shadows to the left and the midtones to the right, we can create some color contrast. As you see here, there are a lot of more settings. We have film grain, which we will disable for now, as well as halation and bloom, which I really like because they are very subtle. Film breath gives you accidental change in exposure, contrast and color from frame to frame as the film is being played. And gate wave gives you the mechanical swinging when the film is being pulled through the projector. Before we continue, let's have a look at our footage and how it compares to the original look. At the bottom, you have the section LUT generator. We will expand it and choose 33 as LUT size. Then we export our LUT. Unfortunately, the current version of Dehancer does not export film grain, halation, bloom and vignetting effects. Now to get the Dehancer effect onto our Lumix S5 II or S5 IIX, we have to first rename the LUT. It is very important that you give a short name to your LUT. Otherwise, you won't be able to import the LUT into your camera. I copy the LUT in the root folder of my SD card from my camera. Make sure you place it next to the DCIM and private folder. Then I safely remove my card from my PC and put it into my camera. Once you start your camera, go to the settings wheel to the top section and there to LUT library. Select a slot and load your VTL file into your camera. We have now two different options on how we can proceed. First, we can load the LUT into our VLOG preview. Go to the second camera icon and select VLOG View Assist. Here you can choose your LUT. Now as you see, everything I film looks already like my LUT. So you already know how the final footage will look like. Also you can add and post in DaVinci other effects like the halation, bloom, film grain and vignetting from Dehancer Pro. The second option is for shooters who want to create their final look in camera and later not bother with post-production. For this, go to the camera icon and select the first category. Select photo style and go to real-time LUT. Go down to LUT. To select your LUT, press the autofocus mode button. Then press set again to confirm. Now you see our video has the look of our LUT. 
Here it is important for you to understand that a real-time LUT will burn into your footage. You will end up with 8-bit REC 709 footage instead of 10-bit VLOG footage. In DaVinci or your other favorite video editor, you just need to cut your clips, adjust the audio and that's it. Real-time LUTs are a lot more limited if you have to make exposure or color changes later in post-production. I wouldn't use it for professional client projects, but for small indie projects or for your vlog, it can be totally fine. If you like and think it could be useful for you to get Dehancer Pro, you can use my promo code CAMERARIC and get 10% off. There's also an iPad app if you prefer. It allows you to apply different analog film emulations on your videos. As you see down here, they are the same options as in the DaVinci OFX plugin. What do you think about the analog film look for digital cameras? Do you like it or do you prefer the clean, perfectionist digital look? Let me know down in the comments below and see you in the next awesome video.